Hi folks, this is Clint from TechSmith. In this video, I want to explore five ways you can use groups in Camtasia to enhance your videos. I'll also explain two traps or side effects of groups that you're going to want to avoid. Here I have some stock footage and on top of that I have applied some text. The text has a drop shadow, it's kind of subtle. Let's group those two things together. Now it is as if they are a single video and we can apply some effects to all of the elements together. I add a spotlight to emphasize the text a little, and then I add a color adjustment to make it really stand out. Finally, I can add a color LUT to it all, and it really helps to bring these elements together. Here's another simple example. I've grouped some text with this hand-drawn arrow from the Camtasia library. If I apply a drop shadow to the group, the drop shadow applies to both the text and to the arrow. If I apply a behavior, that also applies to both. Now, here is a problem that I encounter all the time. I have some stuff on my canvas, like a screen recording, and I also have some text on top of that. I want to transition to something else, but the transition is applied only to the recording and not to the text. The easy way to work around this is to group the text with the thing behind it before placing the transition. If we do that, the text transitions properly. Here's another way groups can help you control transitions. Let's say I have a webcam recording and I want that to appear on top of my screen recording. I think the four corners transition would look cool to bring that on. But if I apply that to my webcam, the transition works across the whole canvas, which is not what I wanted. If I group my webcam with itself, that group becomes its own canvas in the project within a project. So if I go into that group, I can add the transition to the webcam in the group, and now that transition looks the way I wanted it to. If you've used the title assets that ship with the Camtasia library, you may have already noticed that you can change the values in those assets using the properties panel. We call those quick properties, and it's easy to make them by using groups. Here I've got a few things on my canvas, a title and a subtitle, and each of those has a rectangle behind it. I'm not suggesting this is a great design or anything, it just illustrates the point. I can interact with these things separately, but it gets kind of confusing, and when things are in front of other things, it can get very difficult. If I group these four things together, then all of their important properties get grouped together in the Properties panel as Quick Properties. Now it is very straightforward to edit the text and change the colors of the rectangles. Here I have a box around this little 8-bit alien thingy. It is comprised of two dashed lines and two solid lines. If I wanted to animate this box without a group, it would be very hard, if not impossible. However, if I group them together, this icon called an anchor point appears. The anchor point is the place that a media rotates around. The group's shared anchor point allows you to rotate the whole box around the box's center. Additionally, by control dragging, you can move the anchor point. So, let's say you wanted to rotate the box around its corner. Move the anchor point to the corner, and you can rotate the whole group around it. In Camtasia 23.2, we added audio visualizers, which are special assets that change to show what the audio is doing in your project. Here's an example. Hi, this is me talking so that we can see how the audio visualizer works. Now, as you just saw, the audio visualizer was acting both on my voice and the background music. That is because audio visualizers visualize the audio for the entire project at that moment. So, if I wanted it to visualize only my voice, we can use what we know about groups to fix this. Grouping the stuff that isn't the background music creates an inner project that contains the audio visualizer and my voice, so now only my voice is visualized. Hi, this is me talking so that we can see how the audio visualizer works. So those are five tips for getting the most out of groups. Now let's talk about two traps you're going to want to avoid. Here I have a Lottie file from the Camtasia library. Lottie files scale up without losing definition. Check out these nice diagonal lines and curves. If I place the Lottie in a group, that group's project is outputting a video within the video. If I scale up the group, that scales up the video within a video. Videos do not scale up without losing definition, so scaling up a group looks bad in comparison. Here's some text illustrating the same trap. If you scale up text, it looks just fine, but if you place text in a group and scale up the group, it doesn't look as good. The best option is to resize things to the largest size they will be before putting them into a group. That will preserve the best definition for your media. Camtasia has what we call special callouts, which consist of blur, highlight, spotlight, and pixelate. 
These are similar to media mats in that they work by changing the media behind them in a project. Knowing what we know now about groups, we can see why that could be confusing. If you group a media mat or special callout without grouping the thing it's affecting, it takes it out of the project where it was doing something, and then it stops doing anything. The solution here is to make sure, when grouping special callouts and media mats, to group them with the things that they're affecting. That will preserve the way it was working before the group was created. I hope you found these tips useful. Happy grouping!